So how should we think about this question of favorability? Well, one of the first things you should keep in mind from our discussion of proton transfer is that the stability of charged species is what determines whether a reaction is favored thermodynamically. The charged species are really what makes the difference in the, in the uh, energy of one side of a reaction or the other. The neutral species are more or less uh, very close in energy, essentially equivalent, and so their differences are often negligible. But the charged species are the ones that are really going to lead to a differential in the energy of one side versus another. The second thing you should notice is that the second arrow of this process looks an awful lot like what we draw for an acid accepting electrons. So just as we sort of built the substitution from acid-base chemistry, from proton transfer, we can do the reverse and look at this substitution here, for instance, as very close and very analogous to the dissociation of HBr to form H plus and Br minus. The similarity between this arrow and this one here means that we can use the concepts of acidity to think about leaving group ability. In fact, the two are correlated and proportional. The leaving group ability of X minus is correlated to the acidity of its conjugate acid XH. And it's important to keep in mind that the conjugate acid of the leaving group is actually the important species here. So here I've drawn two reactions and again I've, I've changed the one on the bottom and again in both cases we're going to ask is the reaction favored? So we'll take a look at this in a little bit more detail on the next couple of slides. We can systemize and quantify the idea that acidity is proportional to leaving group ability using pKa. So we know pKa as a number that reflects the acidity of a functional group or a molecule. The lower the pKa, the more acidic. The more acidic, the better the leaving group is. And so when comparing, for instance, two reactions or two sides of the same reaction, we can look for what will the better leaving group be. Well, the better leaving group will be the one whose conjugate acid has a lower pKa. So taking a look at this top reaction, what we see is that if we ran the reaction in the forward direction, the leaving group would end up being Br minus. The pKa of HBr is roughly negative 10, and so that's fairly low, and so that's a suggestion that the reaction is going to proceed two products as we would like. But if the reverse direction is an even better leaving group, or generates an even better leaving group, then the reaction would actually proceed to the left. However, if you look to the left and you imagine drawing arrows in reverse, so using the bromine as a nucleophile now, well in this case now the leaving group is an alkoxide. The pKa of an alkoxide is about 15 and as a result we see that we're going to proceed to the side with the lower pKa of the leaving group's conjugate acid and that's definitely the right. So Br- minus is a much more stable anion than CH3O- minus. and the equivalent of that is saying that the pKa of HBr is much lower than the pKa of CH3OH. Also equivalent to that is saying that the substitution to displace bromine, which is the forward direction, is much more favorable than the substitution to replace an alkoxide, which is the reverse direction. Looking at the second example, we're now attacking with an alkoxide in the forward direction and displacing CH3 minus. The conjugate acid of CH3 minus, remember, is CH4, and the pKa of methane is up around 50. It's quite high. We look at the pKa of CH3O minus, it's again about 15, and just as we saw uh, in the above case, we're going to tend to favor the side with the lower pKa. So it's usually very unreasonable to break a carbon-carbon bond in a substitution reaction. In fact, the formation of the carbon-carbon bond is often highly favorable, which is one reason why substitution reactions are very often used to form carbon-carbon bonds. Thermodynamically, there's no way 
we're going to run in reverse and kick off a carbon leaving group, a carbanion. In fact, the opposite is going to tend to take place. The carbanion wants to attack and displace methoxide in this case. So our conclusion here is that the side with the more stable anion is favored thermodynamically. And so, again, we can use the trends that we learned about the stability of anions to determine which side of an SN2 equilibrium will be favored. So comparing methoxide to bromide, we would argue that bromide is a little bit bigger and is more electronegative than uh, CH3O- and its conjugate acid is a stronger acid. As a result, the stronger, uh, excuse me, the more stable anion is on the right, and we would favor the right-hand side. So this reaction would proceed in the forward direction. However, here, the carbanion is much less stable than the oxyanion, which is stabilized by an electronegative heteroatom, and so this reaction is going to tend to run to the left rather than the right and will not proceed in the forward direction. Here are a couple of reaction coordinate diagrams to acclimate you to this. Notice that this one is downhill and the unfavored reaction is uphill.